Tenekoto, tenekoto katoa. I'm Trevor James. I'm a senior resource scientist uh, responsible for monitoring and restoration of our uh, rivers and wetlands of Tasman District. I have the privilege of leading two freshwater improvement fund projects, including this one about natural wetlands. In this video, we will introduce you to a five-year project set up to enhance and restore natural wetlands in Tasman District. We will describe why restoring wetlands uh, in Tasman is important, uh, what we are going to focus on in the project, and a few examples of the wetlands we have chosen. Along with the constructed uh, wetland project, this project has a value of uh, just a little over four million, and this natural wetland part of it is, is about half that value. Like the Fish Passage project, this is a really exciting project not only for enhancing our environment, but also that it is a partnership with Iwi, Tito Ihu. We acknowledge our Iwi partners and landowners for support of this project. So, uh, the importance of wetlands. <clears throat> They are like, act like a sponge, so floodwaters get uh, soaked up and do less damage to streams uh, and uh, infrastructure downstream. During dry spells, they release this water gently so it keeps the flows in our streams up so they don't get so hot and there's more habitat available for uh, fish and invertebrates that live in these streams. They are an important source of biodiversity for birds and fish, many of them can only survive in, in wetlands. Like the kidneys, wetlands are very good at filtering contaminants that run off the land, like sediment and nutrients and fecal uh, matter, disease causing organisms. It improves the quality of our, our waterways um, and the quantity of water in them. It also sequesters carbon. So uh, it, it stores carbon and uh, that is really good for climate change. <clears throat> also important, wetlands have a high cultural values. Uh, they're important for iwi recognising their kaitiaki tanga, uh, the mahanga kai, the resources such as uh, flax and kuta, and uh, the mana otiwai. <clears throat> So this is the, uh, the importance of the, the values of our uh, waterways from a cultural perspective. So we have had a lot of wetland loss in Tasman, uh, like much of the rest of the country. I have a series of maps here showing you this loss. So uh, this is Golden Bay, part of Tasman. You see the Golden Bay Ecological District as the, uh, the valleys of, of Takika and Aereri. Uh, these have lost the most, about 70% uh, of wetlands have been lost in these areas. Some of the inland high country uh, have fared much better. In the, the uh, river systems draining uh, uh, Tasman Bay, we have uh, the ecological districts of uh, Motueka, which includes all the Waimea Plains all the way up to the Waiiti, and also the plains around Motueka and Rewaka. These have lost 98% of their wetlands. The Mutri Hill Country is uh, also shown in red here as having lost a, a large percentage of their wetlands. Only 5% of wetlands remain in these areas. In the Kawatiri, Bulla part of our district, uh, it's a similar story. However, there is one gem <coughs> Uh, in this uh, sequence, it, and that is around the top house, Sananad area. Uh, quite a lot of wetlands remain in the valley floor of that area. Down the main valley floor of the Buller, we've lost about 80% of wetlands, and then 70% has been lost in um, Matiri and uh, <coughs> Reefton ecological areas. Uh, this is one of my particular favourites of wetlands. It's a uh, bog up at Tutaki Saddle, uh, near, not too far from Murchison. Now the threats to our wetlands, uh, you probably know all about this, the draining of wetlands is, is the biggest thing. Um, wetlands need water to survive. 
<clears throat> have been removed by uh, removal of vegetation, the hoof and tooth method of, of um, pegging up wetlands with cattle, uh, the damming and flooding of wetlands like this lower photo, and uh, the diversion of water out of the wetlands. But another one is the transformative weeds, so grey and crack willow in particular, but there are other species like elder, uh, blackberry, and uh, some ground covers like Montbrescia and yellow fly flag iris. Some of these have just completely overrun wetlands with, and there's no or very, very few native plants remaining under the, uh, the canopy of uh, these mm, uh, transformative weed species. An example of this is a, mm, a sad example. It's Machine Gully. Uh, in the Mutri area, not far from the village of Tasman. It's one of the largest wetlands in the Mutri, it's about 15 hectares, and it used to be dominated by flax land and shrubland. Uh, it was significant to iwi. But uh, although this uh, image may be a little bit difficult to see, the, uh, the image on the left shows back in 2003 when it was dominated by uh, native species. <clears throat> the flaxes, the rushes, and the reeds, and uh, so forth. Then in the year 2000, that, the aerial photograph on the right, it shows uh, a, a dense canopy of grey willow, uh, poplar, and blackberry. So it takes a lot to restore a wetland from those uh, transformative weeds. This picture shows one last remaining wetland in the Mutri. Uh, it's uh, unlike a catchment nearby, the stream downstream of this wetland flows really well in the summertime, and uh, it just shows the importance of even small wetlands. So, we have mapped a lot of wetlands in, in Tasman District over the last uh, um, couple of decades, and uh, many of these field surveys have been uh, undertaken in recent years. During this process, we've recorded a lot about the, the threats, the species that live in them, uh, and so forth. Wetland owners in Tasman have really taken uh, on board the importance of wetlands, and the rate of loss is uh, very low now. But however, that condition of wetlands is still declining, and for the reason particularly of the uh, transformative weeds. So, the objectives of this program are uh, similar to those, uh, the importance that I mentioned before, the mahangakai, particularly the tuna, the eels, koura, and kokopu, whitebait species, but the spiritual values, the Māori. The biodiversity is also uh, very important, it's a particular objective um, at, uh, at, of this program, and of course, water quality and stream flow. So our targets for this program are to restore at least 40 natural wetlands. As part of this process we're estimating that we will provide for 40,000 hours of nature-based employment and that equates to about 26 uh, full-time equivalents. We are planning on planting over 100,000 plants and uh, it restoring the hydrology to a number of these wetlands. So we've got a number of, of detailed uh, uh, prioritization um, system here. We, um, of course, we want to uh, get the best bang for our buck. So we made a short list of about 100 through this process, 100 wetlands, and then got them down to 40. We've, in particular, we've chosen those that are pre-explosion phase of these weeds. Uh, uh, so before they become overrun. With so many wetlands to choose from in the district, it is really hard to know which to leave out. We don't have the ability to include all the wonderful community groups working in wetlands. However, if you are committed and have advanced plans for wetland restoration, uh, we are happy to talk about this. Probably we're set for our program through to uh, March of next year, but after then we can we can talk. So the first criteria about the feasibility and cost effectiveness, 
it's about the extent of these transformative weeds getting them in the pre-explosion phase. Uh, that the hydrology, uh, the expense of that is, is not too high and that uh, planting will re uh, reintroduce and reinvigorate these um, wetlands. Of course, the landowners and community interest is also uh, included in that prioritisation. Ecological significance is really important too. I won't go into the detail of this, uh, but this is a pretty standard practice of, of assessing uh, ecological significance and the wider benefits beyond the wetland for the streams, uh, for carbon storage and to pre prevent weeds spread across other parts of the catchments and of course the cultural values. So in the top 40 you can see here that they're spread throughout the district from Golden Bay through Tasman Bay and into the Buller. Ten of them are on public conservation land. In Golden Bay uh, we've got those up near the base of Fewell Spit, Whareriki and Puponga, uh, through the Aoriri Valley and uh, coastal wetlands as well as inland. We have uh, several in Tasman Bay. There's uh, the two that are marked in red are post explosion of willows and that is Machine Gully on the right and then Waifiro on the left. In the Kawatiri, the Buller catchment, We've got a, a number um, in the top house area and around St Arnold, and then um, in uh, the, the lower buller up the Mataki Taki and Tutaki uh, and other valleys. Now I'll just give you a couple of examples of the types of uh, work that is envisaged for this program. So Puponga wetland, this is uh, dominated by natives, there's only a few uh, pest plants on the borders. So it's well buffered by conservation land, it's really important habitat for marsh birds um, and, and quite large, 30 hectares. But there are these impacts, there's not only the willow but Montbrescia uh, and yellow flag iris as well. These can really take off and uh, absolutely dominate. So the restoration here, as in many of these sites, is control of these weeds and ongoing surveillance. Mangarako Swamp is one of the largest swamps, or is the largest swamp in Tasman District. It's also a Ramsar site, so that's a international, uh, uh, it gives it international importance. It's got uh, um, uh, one of the region's healthiest populations of bittern and crakes, as well as other uh, birds and mudfish, which are uh, currently not found uh, anywhere else or have not been recorded anywhere else in the region. The threats are willow and blackberry, familiar uh, um, baddies. Uh, Matiri wetland uh, just north of Murchison, this has just a few crack willow on the edge ready to invade and uh, it's a plan to just nip it in the bud, quite a quick um, site to restore, uh, but nevertheless it could, if they get away here, they'll get away to neighbouring wetlands as well. The Wairau Saddle Bog near Top House uh, is a very, very important ecologically. Threats coming in are broom and potentially gorse and uh, <clears throat> we've done some surveillance there and uh, yes, it, it, it's not. It's looking good now, but we just need to be really on top of the weeds. Black Valley wetland used to be much larger. There are drains that remain there that um, dry up uh, some of the fringe areas. Uh, so we plan to fill in some of those drains and uh, have some islands of uh, uh, native vegetation to help spread those uh, seed out from those islands. So the next steps for this program are to bring on board some project managers for the job, a Māori liaison officer, work with a technical science panel to make sure that we've got the best advice possible, that we're making the, the uh, best decisions about the direction of this project and the methods that we're using. We'll be engaging contractors for the on-ground work, uh, probably in the springtime, and this will be through the supply panel. If you're interested in more resources about 
uh, Restoring Wetlands. There's a couple of really good publications by Manaki Whenua, Land Care Research. This is uh, uh, one about general wetland restoration and then one uh, <coughs> called Te Reo o Te Repo that is about iwi getting involved in restoring wetlands. So that's just a little uh, introduction to this natural wetland restoration program and we are excited and looking forward to getting into it and meeting you out there. Kia ora.